here has a pretty good bend to it. Okay. And if you actually look from forward, you can see it's actually bent down and it's bent this way. Okay. So Robert has reached out, I don't know what the verdict is, to see if we can just get these components. Because this is just a rod end, we can get that, but it has a weird like yeah, clevis. So we, we haven't pulled it apart to see how bad, if it's just this part, no big deal. If it's in here, we don't know if they're gonna want us to replace this because it is two piece, or if we could just put some new hardware in it and call it good. Yep. Um, the other big thing is, there's just, there's some stuff they did that's a little like the cage, all the track day stuff up up on top is pretty good. Okay. When they did the swap, they, it's like they kind of did it quick and dirty. What they did, instead of normally you just go to the, the it's like a kind of a subframe right here. Mm -hmm. Instead of going across here for the cross member, they just use a stock Mustang one and then they just scapped in a couple of, you know, like a one and a half by one and a half uh, square box tubing. Yep. But if you look at it like in here, it's not fully welded. It's just the way they integrated it is maybe not the best. So at a minimum, and then you see like the floor, like it hangs out, but at a minimum, since it's a track day car, not a show car, we're not worried about aesthetics, but we should probably go through and make sure it's all reinforced and up to the task. Okay. Uh, the other thing is these motor mounts. This is the other like big one. Take a look at that. And I know you're not a fabricator, but no, like this is just a little bit like 316s. They took a piece of angle iron. I don't know if they missed or what, but they, they basically scabbed a piece in and just welded it like at the face instead of like butting it together. And so that weld isn't very good. And luckily you have this big rubber bumper or else if it was just a small one right here and you can see it's actually loose. Um, but it would have just like peeled this off. Like this thing right here, it's just gonna peel off. And if you look like it's just all scab yeah. welded. So I think what we could do is basically we just support one side. We just literally cut that out and just refabricate a new mount. This, like this is all okay. This is all the stock Mustang stuff. I'd probably start with just a stock Mustang mo rubber motor mount or like urethane one. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just build a new cut for it. Cause like that, if that falls, the motor is sitting on the cross member. Other side is the same way. So that those are like those are like the the really really big issues. Okay. Inside the car, there's a couple things. Uh, let me see if there's other stuff on the bottom. He wanted me to show you. He made it. There's some headers under there. You can see your factory flanges, and then see it next down to really small pipe, which is a good per, for performance. See it next from there to there, and then right here it next down again, and then it next up where it merges. So we'll want to. I don't know what we're gonna do there just yet. I don't know if we can find a, like a stock shorty that'll bolt on, or if we're gonna have to fabricate something. As far as the rest of it, it's not pretty, but it works and it's, it, the size is decent. So there's not there's not gonna be a benefit of changing it other than aesthetics. The mufflers though, I would get rid of these Flowmasters and use like a Magnaflow or a Corsa or a Borla. These just have like, if you look inside it, there's a bunch of chambers and baffles in yeah. there. So they redirect airflow. And this is like a small inch high revving motor. We want it to be as little back pressure as possible. Okay. Um, let me see here, there's anything else? No, what's up with the oil floor? They want a solid wall there. The, the fuel system cannot be like to race pretty much any sanction and body. My guess is they probably had one and they lost it or they took it off for some reason. I heard there was a fire. In they the were, truck. oh, yeah, and maybe, yeah, or when they were doing track day stuff in those videos because we saw it on the track, maybe it didn't have the fuel cell yet. Maybe they did it when they did the Mustang and had stock fuel system. Stock fuel system is fine because it's underneath and the lines go underneath. But when you put it in the cabin, yep. they want a wall to separate it. So that's a, it's, it's like an engine compartment. It's a okay. different thing. And then there's a fuel line that goes inside that will just relocate to the outside. Not a big okay. deal. Okay. Um, and in here, a couple little things, nothing, it's nothing major. Um, like the puke tank that's right here, which is actually kind of cool. They just used a plastic overflow bottle and they just literally shoved some hoses in there and called it good. Okay. That's kind of like that aluminum tank that we built on your Char Challenger. Yeah. We'll do something nice and we can buy something that goes okay. in here. What the thoughts are, and then some of the plumbing. Robert wanted to change the plumbing on this and I can't remember why, but there, there, was, a, there was a reason that he didn't like the way it was plumbed. It is plumbed like the factory, but there's a better and way to do it. This is loose. Yeah, and this is the battery's loose, so we got to do a hold down for that. Up, up in the power radio. steering is out. So this thing actually has electric assist. It doesn't have power steering. There's no power steering pump. It has electric rack. Okay. I think when they put the Holly computer, none of your factory electronics work. Robert found a kit 
that you can buy that's its own standalone thing, it's a controller. So we can make your stock rack because the electric assist is in your steering column. Okay. And, then, and you got a nice rack with a lot of turn angle, keep that. What we do is a controller for it, and the cool thing is there's a knob. So if you want to make it heavier or softer, just turn it on. Oh, nice. So Robert yeah. found that, and he says, yeah, that just goes right on there. And it's just, my guess is it's part of the CAN system that's disabled when they put this motor in, so he can make that work. That's that's not that big a deal. One of the things, like Robert, he deals, he's a little bit on the extreme end, because he's on, you know, Von Gidding and Chelsea Denofa, they're... They, Big budget professional race cars. They can change clutches in and out. Like, yeah. that's not real world. Right. So Robert's like, oh, why don't they just put the radiator in the trunk like most guys? Ideally, that's kind of nice, but it's also like, it's just, it's an endeavor. Like, you know, all your lines, you need the inline water pump. There's just some stuff that has to go back there, or you have to cap it off back past the cage. What I think we can do, if you come down here, this, this thing has a really big radiator, which is the stock Mustang radiator, but it's incredibly skinny. <coughs> They make aftermarket radiators of all different sizes, and they make radiate like we, I can just call CNL and they'll build me whatever I want. Okay. But usually that's like extreme option. Usually we can find something that'll work. Mm -hmm. I would like to, and obviously this needs to be cleaned up. I take a like a three row aluminum radiator, which is going to be about an inch thicker. We don't need it to be this size. I can get a radiator that's probably this size. Okay. Maybe a little wider that fills this whole area up, shrunk down. We mount it correctly. What that does is that stops the radiator in here, and that gives us room to come straight down here and fab an intake down here so we can get your hood on it. Yeah. Do you think you we know. can do like the intake that the air flow is coming through these two holes? Or? Yeah, we could because if the radiator is shortened down to here and we can squeeze this tube by it, we can go down here and we can just put like a twin filter or something where, where the filters are back And there. also the hood also has a lot of... Uh, the vents the to vents. get the air out. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Let me look at my list and see. Some of the other stuff. So one of the things I know he was having an issue with is uh, we tried to get into the computer to see if we can tune it, what we can do. This has what's called the Ford, Ford Racing Pack computer so and it was just cool i was surprised i figured it'd have like a wrecking yard computer or something which actually would have made our job easier so what they did is right from ford you can buy the computer and harness to control one of these coyotes but this was done probably a few years ago so that computer is it's not discontinued but they don't sell they used to sell the computer by itself because what happened is it's tuned but we're guessing through sct or some other thing it's not through HP tuners. We looked, we tried to do it. We actually send the file to HP tuners. They go, no, it's not tuned with our software. So if we try to tune over it, it'll brick the computer. Right. So we thought, well, we'll just get a new new PCM. So normally if it was like a stock computer, I think Mary's doing an errand. Let me grab this real quick. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that won't, that, won't, that won't affect the alignment though. Yep, now we're good. We can just do it towards the tail end. Okay, yeah, we can look at that. Like, before it's all said and done, you can bring the wheels and tires and we can take a peek at it. Cool, all right. Sounds good. Tricky. Okay. Because that Ford computer itself should be like five, six hundred dollars. That computer's unavailable and has been. We call Halen. We've looked on everywhere we can find. They have a new version of it, but mm -hmm. it's only available as a Ford control back pack. So it's the computer and the whole harness and the whole control system. It's like eighteen hundred dollars. Damn. Yeah. And here's the thing, I could put a Holly in that for less and just not even use, because the Ford computer's still stock, it's mass airflow, so, and this thing has a leak under there, there's an unmetered air leak somewhere under here, and the mass airflow meter under here, it's just, that's the way you do stock cars. Race cars, we usually do speed density. So, if we put the Holly computer in it, if we bought a Holly system, a couple of things that we can do with it, they run the Coyote, they don't care about emissions, they don't care about all this other stuff that we have to shut off, with the Ford computer, Holly makes different size dashes. Holly makes a screen, basically, yeah. that plugs right like into the their computer. Bands. Just like that, we, mm -hmm. we put that in, they make all, they make the giant ones, they make all different ones. Because I know none of your gauges, none of that stuff yeah. work because of that. Now, with the Holly, we plug it in, you can have speedometer, you can have gasket level, we can have oil pressure, oil temp, RPM, you can have all the stuff that you normally would. Okay. And you could control stuff with it. So, like, that's one of the things is if we're not tuning it, you leave it alone. But if we're to be able to tune it, we're going to likely have to change. Well, I mean, we could try it. And if it bricks, I mean, we're not out anything because we got to buy a system. If it doesn't brick, cool, we tune it. But if it does, 
then we're gonna have to do something different. Normally what we do if it was a stock computer, say out of like 88 Mustang, or like, sorry, not 88, but like 2011 and up Mustang, what we would do is we would just, we have uh, through, through our Snap-on setup, we have a thing to where we can reprogram the stock tunes. We just call them up, we give them the VIN, and then they force feed and do it all over the internet, and we plug in, and it's a whole thing. Okay. But since it's that Ford control pack, they can't do it because it's not assigned to a car. And that it's Ford like a control pack is like a custom. It's a it's their aftermarket stuff aftermarket. for the race cars. Yeah, it's basically for like a so for like been a, a guy lot done doing to this, this already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so basically, what it is, it's it's for this job. Like a lot of guys. So get what on this about, engine isn't stock anymore? Because I have no idea. I've known nothing about Ford. So my guess is it's probably the stock motor. We haven't identified the year, but just we haven't so, looked uh, yet. 2016. 16? Okay. Gen that's, 2. Okay, it's a Gen 2. Yeah, the Gen 1s are a little different. So this is a higher horsepower one. I think internally it's all the same. I think it's just the computer and all the controls that run it that they change. They just put okay. an aftermarket control pack. Because it looks like a lot of like fuel lines and Yeah, stuff. so they had to do that to make it run. They had to modify the fuel lines. This is actually a vent for the radiator right here. So they just they modified that. Um, um, and then they put different rails and stuff to make it work in this application. But as far as guts, internal, insides, probably all stock. Which is fine. This is more than enough motor for this little car. And I heard that a lot of the, uh, like, suspension stuff has been upgraded. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Underneath, there, everything has been upgraded. Mm -hmm. So the, another thing to think about is these motors, you know, like normally, like even the Hemi. Guys all the time with Hemi's call, whether even if it's, even like the five sevens or six fours or even the LSs and they're like, hey, I got this car, whatever, I want to put it on E85. Not worth it until you're boosted and making big power, you don't get any power. Yeah. These coyotes love E85 because they're high revving small inch motors. So we've taken a few of them that are just stock and like um, different throttle body, uh, headers, you know, long tube headers, cat back, sometimes even changing the intake manifold and the switch into E85 and see like 40, 50 horsepower difference. So, you know, E85 on this might be good, you know, helps one keep the motor and stuff cooler too. But the big thing that Robert wasn't sure on is like, yeah, you know, cause I was like, well, Dustin doesn't know anything on this. It runs, and there was some issues with third gear. I go, that was about it other than the, the fire and this and that. Yeah. And so he made his list to kind of go over and go, okay, let's come together and figure out what to do. A couple things 